Uh, hey guys, yeah, this is just another video. Bob asked for me to make a script to generate the, uh, called them Nature's Donuts, I think. Anyways, they're just the, uh, the other donuts that aren't actually coiled. So they're a fair bit easier to uh, make, but uh, you can't do deform meshes in OpenSCAD. So I had to make a script to do it in Blender. So let's paste the script in here. I gotta do new first, let me paste it in. Um, I put some parameters in it. So basically it's to do the four level tour. Um, I'll start off by just uh, showing you the second level one. So down here at the bottom they've got level and that'll let you specify how many levels you want to show. So let's minimize some of this stuff here. So if you run it, it'll just make a two level tour with this one. Um, there's some so I'll show you some of the options here. So the first five radiuses here are just the incremental radiuses as you go up. So it's similar to the other one, except for the fact that you can't specify the position radius different from the uh, the actual diameter radius. There's only one radius because it does the deforms for you. So for example, if you put a one here and you run it again, um, I'm going to do this here to clear that. If you put clear first, it'll delete the last one it made, so you don't have to keep deleting it manually. And you'll see now that the donuts are smaller, but they're not D4D anymore. So I'll put it back at 0 0.5 to get it back to D4D. So there's the D4D one. Um, I have another parameter here called stretch. And what stretch does is it actually deforms the D4D donut to try to make it fill as much of the, the radius as possible. So you see if I put stretch off, what you end up with is the proper D4D donuts just squished on the inside. Um, and if you were to put in like a 48 donuts, you know, that would look kind of correct or whatever. Um, I have no idea what <laughs> the actual geometry is for these, but like if you put an eight, it looks a little funny and it looks a little sparse when you try to ren render the, um, the fourth level tour. So I added this thing called stretch, which just stretches them to make them look like they're filling the space better. Um, there's also a thing called smooth here, which will make them high poly, but you don't want to do that when you're doing a fourth level tour because it'll just totally bog down your machine. Um, so now they're like smoother, right? Okay, so if we step up to a second level or third, third order donut, you just do three there. And now you'll see you've got like this, right? Um, you can, what can you do? You could make this smaller, for example. You can make it like four. What did that do? Oh, that changed that one. Okay, so if you do um, 16 here, you see you get some different combinations of things going on. Um, Anyways, so I'll put those back to the default values and I will up it. Actually, I'll show you one thing before I do this. So if I do this and I take this down to say 16, you can put a stretch on the second level too if you want, but what it'll end up doing is it'll deform it in two directions so it won't actually look like a donut anymore. It'll look like this squished oblong thing, which may not be what you actually want because I don't think an electromagnetic field would ever create that form. Although, I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, so I just leave it false and just, which kind of raises some interesting questions because I mean, you can kind of figure out what the optimal packing might be anyways. But uh, so I'll put that back to 32. And then, you know, turn off the smoothing because once I go up to the higher order one, it'll be too many polygons for my machine. So if I do this, it should make it, it takes about uh, 10 seconds to make it when you're doing the fourth order tour. Um, yeah, there we go. At least on my machine it takes that long. And you can see there you got a lot of donuts. And um, you know if you want to make these higher down here so turn off the stretching and make this 32 you know you can do that. Um, seconds.
Yeah, it can take a little while once you get up into these really high order ones. Come on. I think I may be pushing my machine a little too hard here. Sorry to make you guys wait. The only downside is you can't cancel it once you start. Okay, so it is done. So you got your crazy detailed thing there. So let's just, uh, you know, go back to the lower order one, which isn't going to totally destroy my computer here. A 16 or 8, maybe even. Okay. Um, so then the other thing you can do is you can export these from Blender because I know Bob uses Lightwave and this probably isn't going to be as much use to him as a Lightwave plugin is but I don't have Lightwave and I don't really want to learn how to do another thing. Um, so you just do export. I think it would probably take an OBJ file or something like that. So um, anyway, so that's it. I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be. Um, if anyone the way that I'll just briefly mention how the deformation works when you do the stretch, it uh, it pinches it towards the center, and if you do the stretch option, it expands the outside to fill the equivalent angular space that uh, you would get if the tor were filling up. So if there were, for example, if it was a uh, eight segments, you know you'd have. Um, 45 degrees per segment. So it basically takes what the D4D width would have been and it expands that to fill the full 45 degree width. All right, and I will end the video there.